So guys, we've had the newest generation M1 iPad Pro for just about a week now, and after using it extensively as my main mobile work experience, I've noticed that uh, things are a lot faster with this new M1 chip, and not just a little bit faster, it's actually way faster. And in today's video, we'll take a first look at what's new with this new iPad Pro, and then break down exactly how much faster it really is compared to other devices out there. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first let's take a look at what's new with this year's iPad Pro and externally there are really no differences when comparing this model to the 2020 model. There is however a difference in the antenna placement for 5G on the bottom of the device and that's really the only visual change when comparing the two models externally. Now internally, there's a ton of new stuff like the M1 chip, increased sizes in RAM, 5G hardware, new camera hardware, a new liquid retina XDR display, and even a redesigned passive cooling design to help everything run smoothly with that new M1 chip. Now, the other change that we saw released alongside this new iPad Pro was the white version of the Magic Keyboard. And man, this actually looks very, very cool. Obviously, we have a primarily white design for the keyboard area and back cover, but also silver accents for the folding hardware mechanism as well. Now, the keyboard is the exact same keyboard that we saw released last year, so nothing new other than a new color option here, but white is always good to go with with your brand new iPad Pro. Now, lastly, the unboxing experience was exactly the same as last year. So nothing really new there, but obviously, as previously mentioned, a ton of stuff going on internally, which makes this new iPad Pro a very interesting new release. Okay, so let's move on to talking about speed and performance and start to compare this new iPad Pro to the two generations prior to see the performance gains uh, between those three years, three or four years that we've seen the iPad Pro in this new redesign. Now, when we did our benchmarking test, you can see that there's a very natural progression in performance between the 2018 model and the 2020 model, which is to be expected. But with the M1 iPad Pro specifically, we see a crazy jump in performance that just isn't what you see year to year very often. Now, when we look at the comparison between the 2018 and 2020 iPad Pro, the results really weren't that impressive, but the M1 clearly has a major advantage here, being Apple's own chip, having eight CPU cores and eight GPU cores, which will give you a huge amount of CPU and GPU performance gains. Now, this will be especially beneficial for those interested in apps that require solid graphics performance like the Adobe Suite and LumaFusion, or even if you are interested in the more graphic intensive gaming apps offered in the App Store as well. Now, when we compare the M1 chip to other devices out there with the same exact chip, results don't vary that much, but you can see a slight performance drop off with devices like the iPad Pro and MacBook Air that don't have an active cooling system. The cooling system in devices like the iMac, Mac Mini, and MacBook Pro will allow that M1 chip to cool down more efficiently and obviously will allow for higher performance yields. But so far, the performance is really good coming from this iPad Pro and temperatures aren't too hot. Okay, so as you can see, the overall performance is clearly miles above what we've ever seen before on an iPad, but now we even have desktop class performance on the iPad Pro lineup as well. And what I've also noticed is that when going throughout iPadOS 14 and just doing your day-to-day -day normal task, you might not notice much of a difference in speed and performance, but when you start to work with apps like LumaFusion or any of the Adobe Suite apps where you need to render down media, things are working a lot faster than what we saw with the 2020 iPad Pro with that A12Z chip. Now, we are still dealing with iPadOS 14 as of right now, and obviously app developers haven't fully developed their apps to take full advantage of the M1 chip on the iPad just yet. But with WWDC right around the corner and iPadOS 15 beta testing shortly on their horizon, I expect to see way better performance and also an ability to utilize this M1 chip a lot better than what iPadOS 14 allows you. So guys, that was a quick first look at the new 2021 M1 iPad Pro and how system performance is upon initial testing. If you guys have any questions about today's video, please leave them in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, make sure to let us know your thoughts on this year's new iPad Pro as well. 
We'll have a full review of this iPad Pro coming very soon, so make sure to tune in for that as I have quite a bit of thought on why you might want to consider this as your next purchase from Apple. So guys, thank you all for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for watching Updated on YouTube. Before you head out, make sure to get subscribed and also hit that notification bell button to stay up to date for when we publish any new content here on the channel. Also, if you want to check out some of our other things that we have going on, check the links down in the video description below. You can check out our channel memberships, our merch store, my personal Twitter account, which you should totally follow, and a link to the updated podcast where we have new episodes every single week talking about everything going on in the world of tech. So again, thank you all for watching today's video and we hope to see you in some upcoming content. But until then, I hope you all have an awesome day.